Hi, my name is Beth and I'm the sewing pattern designer and blogger at Sew DIY. Welcome to my April 2020 vlog. In this video, I'm going to tell you all about what's been happening behind the scenes at Sew DIY and share what I've been sewing. Let's get started. Okay, let's start with things I made in April. First up is this morning side shirt. This is a pattern by French Navy Patterns. I had the pleasure of meeting Sarah May, the pattern designer, back in January of this year when I was in Cape Town for a few days. Um, Cape Town was beautiful, so amazing, and it was really great to meet Sarah. So here's my shirt. Um, she was wearing one when I met her and I begged her to give me the pattern. I've made her collier pants before and both of them are really sophisticated, relaxed styles. They're really comfortable, I think well suited to warmer weathers, a little bit loose, um, but with a lot of really great design details. So this shirt has kind of a smaller collar. There's a yoke that goes kind of a little to the front of the shoulder. Um, which I kind of liked. I usually do a square shoulder adjustment, but I think with this yoke, I just didn't really need to. There isn't that shoulder seam at the shoulder that would usually give me problems. So I didn't make any shoulder adjustments. There's also this concealed button placket. Um, this fabric is really shifty, so I really took my time with this. Years ago, I tried to make a dress with a placket like this, and it was just an utter failure. I kept like doing it over and over, and it was just so disappointing that I've been really scared off of sewing them ever since then. So it was great to sew this and have success doing it. I really like Sarah's instructions. Um, the only drawback of the pattern would be that it doesn't have a huge size range, um, but the instructions are really great and I really love the designs. I made a size medium and I did a half inch full bust adjustment and I added two inches to the length of the body. But those are the only changes I made. Um, it has little cuffs, which might have fallen down. I should tack them up. Um, little cuffs at the sleeves. Um, this fabric is a rayon, so it has a lot of drape. Um, yeah, so I really like it. It's a really great one. So this was really my biggest garment make for the month. I also made a scrap quilt. Um, I was not planning on making this, but I found these old quilt blocks when I was sorting through my fabric for the I Love My Fabric Party. And I just like had this compulsion that I needed to make this quilt. Um, I had all these fabrics that I had bought and saved for another quilt which is done um, and these are all the leftovers so I'm calling it like my rejects and leftovers quilt so this is this is the top of the quilt um, and then I've even made the back so I just have these ready I'm keeping it hanging up in the um, closet for right now until I'm ready to quilt it into a real quilt and I'm still working on my single girl quilt. I didn't make very much progress in April because I got distracted by that other impulse quilt. Um, but I did find a bunch of white cotton fabric for the backgrounds of my blocks while I was doing my fabric party. So that one I'm hoping to get back into in May and make some good progress. One more thing on things I made. In last month's vlog, I didn't have my Euler bra to show, so I did find it. I had stuffed it in the closet for some reason. Um, here it is. I made it from a bamboo knit, um, and the band, I didn't have elastic wide enough for a full band, so I used the instructions to do a fabric-covered band. Um, and you know I did try wearing it again and it just kind of got uncomfortable and here I'm going to awkwardly show you um so I am wearing a bra obviously under this but I think it's just not a great shape for my bust shape and that's something that I find even with ready-to-wear bras that 
some bras just like aren't shaped as well for my breasts and some are some work really well so i'm not i'm probably not going to really be wearing this one or making it again it's kind of a bummer um i feel like making bras is like a 50 percent success rate for me next up let's talk about things happening on the blog i've already mentioned a couple times the i love my fabric party it was early in april it was really fun um I was able to organize my fabric stash and kind of get my scraps and handle and get my, yeah, <laughs> um, get my scraps in order. It also inspired me to make that scrap quilt. So I, I don't know, that's good or bad. It totally distracted me from other things, but um, I do like being able to use up things in my stash. So that feels like a success. Um, and I think anytime you have like a creative impulse and you actually get to use that impulse and kind of expend that creative energy that's always a success so to go along with the fabric party i had two video blog posts the first one was how to fold fabric for stacked storage so i will put a link in here so you can go watch that video it's just how to fold it up so you get your fabric all stacked and um, folded really neatly it'll make it less wrinkled later and when you open your drawers or look at your shelves you're able to see everything you have at a glance it's totally my favorite way to store fabric and it's really easy um, definitely check out that video and I'll also put a link to the video down in the show notes the second video that I posted in April was three steps to tackle your scrap bin in the video I share my method for organizing scraps when I just have like a whole basket full of random scraps I share my tried and true process for tackling and conquering the scraps so definitely check that video out again link up here and in the show notes so I definitely did post a little bit less this month than I did in March um, I've been working a lot behind the scenes on a couple of new patterns and on my improvisational quilting e-course. If you're interested in the e-course, I will put a link down in the show notes to sign up for the newsletter just about that e-course. Um, it was, you know, second full month of social isolation or social distancing, I should say. Um, so I just felt like I kind of got distracted a little more easily than I would normally. So um, didn't get as much blog posting and Instagram posting done as I would like, but it is what it is. Um, I did burn my hand while cooking kind of the second or third week of the month and ended up not posting a video that week because um, I just wasn't up for it. It's healing very well. It was totally fine. But it is really scary. I feel like when those kind of scary things happen during these times, it's more alarming than it would normally be because um, you feel like you don't have the resources that you would normally have. So yeah, kind of scary things are a little bit more alarming than usual. We had an earthquake here last week in the middle of the night and it woke me up and it, even that just really it took me a day to kind of like be like, okay, everything's fine. We're getting back to normal ish so things are going along i'm trying to really focus on these projects that i've been wanting to do for a long time so that i can get them out into the world to all of you so looking forward into may i am going to be participating in me may may again this year this will be my let's see 2013 14 15 16 17 18 19, 20. This is going to be my <laughs> this is going to be my eighth year participating in Me May May. I think it's just a really fun way to document what I'm wearing, and really appreciate some of my Me May clothes that I maybe haven't worn in a little while. To celebrate Me May May, I am going to be doing a discount code for all of you. The code is for twenty percent off all PDF patterns, and it's MMM twenty off put it in here and down in the show notes with a link to the shop. If you're not familiar with my patterns, there are a lot of basics, really easy to wear, easy to sew, and really great wardrobe builders. So to go along with Me Made May, I'm thinking about some ways that I can highlight the patterns and share some different ways that you can wear them and maybe even do a live sew along. I've never done a live like that before, so um, 
it would be interesting and maybe fun to try out. Let me know what you think. If you would like to support the channel and the blog and all the free content that I've created, you can make a donation by buying me a coffee. There's a link down in the show notes, or you can always visit the pattern shop and buy a pattern. I hope that you're all staying safe and healthy during these trying times. I'm thinking about you and sending you lots of happy sewing vibes. Mm -hmm.